Hallelujah. Let's turn in our Bibles to Psalm 20, verse 2. Psalm 20, verse 2. We encourage everyone to write their five-year plan and bring them. At this period, we would be praying also about those things. Psalm 20, verse 2. Will you have it on the screen, please? It's very important that when you pray, that your prayers are guided by what God is saying. So you're not just praying by yourself. He says, and I want you to, um, if you can project a new century version after this, I will really love it. He says, send thee help from the sanctuary. Strengthen thee out of Zion. Hi. I don't know where you want help from. Concerning your goals, he says, strength thee, send thee help. <laughs> when God sends you help, no man can stop it. It says, send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. <laughs> if they have the new century version, I, wa I wanted to see what it says. New century version. I I'm going to read it to you. The New Century Version says this. May the Lord send you help from his sanctuary and grant you support. He said, and grant you support. This morning, let me tell you something. Very, There's an important attitude in prayer. And that is the attitude of desperation. That says that, Lord, without you I can't do this. What do I know? Who am I? What do I know? What am I connected to? All I have is you. All I know is you. I'm not that intelligent. All I know is you. Only you can make it happen. It's, it's an attitude. And, and when you read the scripture, it's really the prayers of David. David will pray as if he's not a king. He would he will pray. He will, he will say, who am I? And we're just letting the Lord know, if you don't help me, we're sunk. Glory to God. I say glory to God. This is a prayer today concerning my goals send me help send me help send me help send me help oh let's go ahead and pray oh god send me help oh let's go ahead and pray oh now tena menet sinan tiny akaya lamandia tatane come tone solete in a cane gratina sumanteliaca chapra di kina matoni credusa lina comani kiso pedata egiatani kuma so viceto egiatani kuma toke vesso atune kima tori kusha patagaya who am i what do i know shabakoma sapa gratadina sena criticaca Sene kritikaka, sene kritikaka, sene kritikaka, sene kritikaka. La kina to pene panakasa, e pene kapana panana na na ikato. Extu shaba kwata, extu shaba kwata, extu shaba kwata. Send us help out of your holy city. Send us help out of your holy city. Send us help out of Zion. Let our help arise. Let our help arise. We may not know government. We may not know people. We may not know the right relationship. But we have God. The creator of the heavens and earth. Oh God. Shakena. Shalate. Shaboka. Rakume. Shekume. Send us support of God. Ine kume kobo kane kolandaya. Ine kume kane kamatunaye. And one day kosama. And one day sovane. Ino shako kosamata. In Jesus they pray. I want you to turn your Bible to Proverbs chapter 16. Yeah. Shanekova 
अच्छा देगा यारा all i want is you all the help i need is you all the help i need is you lord all the help i need is you 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 all the help I need is you. Yeah, I got the captain, Kasatana. In a tona, Sina, Sina, Toka, Kasatana, Sina, Toka, Kasatana, Sina, Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9. Let go shall let those here Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9. Do we have it on the screen? Yes. The Bible says, A man strategizes his ways, but the Lord directs his step. Hallelujah. <laughs> Concerning these things, Father, direct my steps. Father, direct my steps. Ah, he said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your step order my step into the right conversations order my step into the right relationships i don't want to do this by myself lord order my step concerning my goals let's go ahead and pray Amen. The last prayer. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. Uh, and all of you watching online, I don't, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you have to get out of that bed and get in a comfortable prayer position. If you have those your five goals, hold it close to you because that's what we're praying about. Those are your five year vision plan. This is what the Bible says. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. Will you jump to verse 6 first? Let's give context to this. This is Paul writing. Paul says, I plant, I work hard. He says, Apollo waters. He said, Apollo is doing his own part also. He said, there's also someone that is working so hard, that is planting. He said, someone that is also watching. Then he puts a big butt. He said, but God is the one that gives the increase. See what it says in verse 7. He said, so then, neither is he that planted anything, nor he that watered anything. It is the giver of increase. God. It is the giver of increase. It is the giver of increase. This is a prayer, everybody. 
Everybody say, My father, my father, my father, my father. Breathe upon my goals. Breathe upon my goals. Breathe upon the works of my hands. Breathe upon the works and of my hands. And let it bring forth increase. Let there be increase. Father. Let there be increase. Let's go ahead and pray. Everybody. Yes, Lord. Rina tika la pina tova shadi Ozina e Ozila te Thank you Jesus Thank you Lord Psalm 46 This prize for everyone that is in trouble There are people that are in trouble right now financial trouble marital trouble and all of you online if you can get your friends to join this is a very good time to get them to join if they can't join like they should go back and watch it on youtube on instagram psalm 46 verse 1 hey it said god is our i'm reading from the new international version you can also leave the King James. He said, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. He said, therefore, we will not fear. He said, therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give us way. Though the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its water rolls and foam. Though the mountain quake with their surging. Why? There is a river. Antonaya. There is a river whose stream makes glad the city of God. He said the holy place where the first high drops. God is within us. She will not fail. God is within us. She will not fall. God is within us. She will not fail. People in trouble, you're going to pray. It's a two-dimensional prayer. You are going to pray. I don't know what trouble you're in. It may not even be something about business. It may be your health. But you are going to pray that Lord has suffered the kosher not That you are my refuge and my strength. I will not be afraid because you will come through for me. For the remaining of us, 
Welcome to pray and say, Father, there is a stream. I've come to know the stream. I want to flow in the stream. I want to know you more. I want to the stream to overflow me. I want to be drunk in the stream. There's nothing I want more than what you want. All I cherish is your presence. All I'm looking for is what you want, oh God. Lift up your hands, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Who are we? What have we? What can we do? Who is that? He said, We'll not be at nothing. Everything we have, everything we are, everything achieved. It's because of you. Oh, yes, oh God. Oh, we choose not to be forgetful. Oh, because the river that forgets its source will dry up. You are the river. You are the source. You are the everything. You are just doing it through our hands. It's more than our wisdom. It's more than our knowledge. It's more than our power. It is your grace. It is your mercy. It is your faithfulness. Father, Father. Father, Father. Father, Father. We have come to say, You are the most important in our life. Nothing else makes a difference but you. Oh, God.
Ah, teach me to value your presence. Teach me to value your presence. You are yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 and 7 again and we'll pray. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. So if you have your goals out, this is the time to bring them out anyway, eh, so as we pray on it. Ah, ya kone nene kole zuzu. Leni kata. Amakone shakaya. May we not forget our source. Ah no ke zune kariata hala komombo komenina kata may we not trivialize things that may we not trivialize the presence of God may we not trivialize the presence of God may the things of the spirit carry weights in our hands and in our hearts ah shakome zezelegit may distraction fall off may distraction fall off may distractions fall off ambo ke zone matosha de See so what the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It says, Paul says, I have planted. It says, Apollos have watered. It says, but God give the increase. Verse 7. It says, so then, neither is he that planted anything, neither is he that watered anything, but God that gave the increase. If you have your goals, will you stretch them out or raise them up anywhere you are? Ah. Huh. Huh. The horse is prepared against battle. But safety is of the Lord. Men can strategize. Men can buy weapons. Men can prepare. But safety is of the Lord. Hakojane. You are the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. Rivers in the desert. I, <laughs> my father and my God, my father and my God. There's no one compared to you in wisdom. There's no one compared to you in power. There's no one compared to you in any dimension. Before the beginning, you were. After the beginning is gone you will be after the end is gone you are the bible says in you at the beginning and the ending outside you there is no beginning outside you there is no ending you are the alpha and the omega <laughs> hey, 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 hey you are the god uh, of the patriarch you are the covenant keeping god oh yes you kept the fathers of faith you never feel them. You've never failed before. You are the God of Abraham. When Abraham left his father's house and proceeded into a strange country, you are the God that called him out of comfort zone and called him into fulfillment. You are the God of Isaac. When there was famine in the land and Isaac was going to journey down to Egypt, you were the one that told Isaac, stay in the famine, for in this same place I will bless you. You are the God of Jacob. When Laban was about to oppress Jacob, you 
uh, the one that appeared to Nabak and said touch me not uh, don't even speak roughly to him you are the God of Abraham you are the God of Isaac you are the God of Jacob you are the God of the prophet the God of Moses the God of Elijah the God of Elisha the God of Isaiah the God of Micah the God of Jeremiah of Nahum of Zephariah you are the one that said so and it is you are the one they call upon in times of trouble and you came down with your mighty power you send your mighty angels you did impossible that's what we're asking you for this morning Shina Kumatani Saki Kituma Papata Holy Kushani Kituma Sati Sopukumeli Kapata A brain Sani Kifa Vantone A Tune Sati Kalorada Dino Tanto Mata Dino Tanto Mata He says it's in vain to wake up in the morning except the Lord watch the city then I watch watch in vain except the Lord build the city then I build it in vain we are praying concerning all this vision and calls build with us I said 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 build with us in the name of Jesus I'm praying you breathe upon all of this work strategy and goals for growth build breathe upon it for increase Hey, breathe upon it for increase. Breathe upon it for increase. That life giving breath of life. Let it come upon the visions. Let it come upon the desires. Let it come upon the plans. Upon the growth in the name of Jesus. I prophesy about you today. That this vision you've written and plans. They will manifest. Either you're watching online or offline, they will manifest. In the name of Jesus, the conditions, the conditions, the conditions to make them manifest, the power of the Holy Spirit begins to create it. Amen. From these things you've written, angels have received spiritual instruction to walk and to walk in your favor. It will not be delayed in the name of Jesus. We declare it's done. Yes, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, you can have your seat. Wow. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to be at what if we go right now, are we are we done? Wow. Praise God. That that was a download by the spirit. Praise God. Listen to me. When you leave this kind of meeting, one thing is you leave that should never leave you. Leave with the assurance. And everywhere you go, no matter what happens, it is done. Because you've left with deep assurance. Praise God. This, you know, this is the kind of service you write down the date. You say, yeah, something significant happened today. Did you, did you feel it in your soul? That something significant happened? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just two announcements, and I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 5. Two announcements. This week, we're praying for funding, um, business funding and provision in next level prayer. So I'm asking everyone that's in that condition, all the business people that you're in that phase where you need funding, we're going to fast tomorrow. After tomorrow, if we need to continue, I will tell you again that we should continue. So we're going to fast tomorrow, and we're going to pray. And I want to say something to you, all of you. I wanted to look out for your friends. I know because this has been going for a long time, some people are becoming consistent. And even some people here. But I don't think there's a week you want to miss. So will you please go ahead, remind yourself. And I want to say to you, all of you, um, all of you that are on Facebook, we, we really found that Facebook is you know, very, very key to people knowing it may even be more effective than Instagram. All of your Facebook, the first thing I would like you to do is that go to the Pastor Balaji page and please follow there. 
and um, you can, it's easier to share there because we're trying to reach more people. We're trying to reach more people. My heart, see, it's the end of the year and a lot of people are getting depressed. And this is the reason why we must spread the prayers because you must choose yourself as an evangelist. And that's what I want to do. I want to spread it. So all of you, all of you outside the country, all of you within the country, in another state, I want you to take it as a personal mandate and say, you know what, I'm going to get about five, six, seven people. They are my friends. I've reminded them before. I'm going to intensify and get them back. Praise the Lord. So remember all of us, we're fasting and praying. If you have a business partner, you have an uncle or sister, just text them. We're fasting and praying. The reason why I'm saying so is that don't let people end up, the year is not over yet. I don't want people to end up in a depression. I want them to end in victory. The reason why is that once, if you are alive and you have hope, there can be a miracle. But once hope is gone, it will even be difficult for God to help you. And that's why tomorrow, if if it's business funding you want or provision, I mean it's the whole week, but tomorrow we're going to start with the prayers. Glory to God. And the first Sunday in November. <clears throat> so on Tuesday also we have, um, on Tuesday if you can come out to come and praise the Lord with us, we have, you know, one of my f- new favorite, Yinka Aladeshore, Alade, you know the name already, you know, <clears throat> that sang, um, she'll be here live in the Lekki Center leading praise and worship. So if you want to come and join us, invite your friends to come, it will be really, really good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say Hallelujah. I'm just trying to calm down. So the first Sunday, so she's going to be here. I thought you had the flyers for Yinka. You're going to put it up. And the last thing is, um, the first Sunday in November, we have um, a healing service. So it's not going to be in the morning. It's going to be in the evening because sometimes when there's a healing service, um, it's very difficult because the service are 90 minutes before I even finish praying. Like now, the service is over. You know, so, but in the healing service, about four to seven, some of you have people in the hospital because some people want me to lay hands. Even if I start laying hands on people, people that are registered for the faith class, just the laying hands takes about 90 minutes. Because as I'm laying hands, people are getting from the wheelchair, people are doing what they could not do before, so we're paying attention and all of those things. So we have a healing service opposite on its four. So we're going to have the service in the morning and in the evening, we'll, we'll be there to just be able to do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all of you that stay in Niger, our workers' service in Nigeria is starting in the next few weeks, in about two weeks thereabout, in just a couple of days, just trying to finalize. So the workers are going to be meeting every Sunday in the venue and we'll be prepared. So all of you that stay in Nigeria, you just need to lean into that. Praise the Lord. All right. So let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 5. Can I get a cup of water? But not, nothing cold, please. Thank you. One of my assistants said, why did you wear a t-shirt today? I said, because I knew we were going to pray. So I didn't want hindrance. You know, the more dressed up you had, the more difficult it is to pray well. Yes, because like this suit now, I'm always having to remove the button and unbutton and remove the button and unbutton. <clears throat> and those of you that feel as if, thank you. John chapter 5 verse 2. John chapter 5 verse 2. Thank you. I love our media people. They never want people to see me drink water. So every time I drink water, they just put like a video on it. Thank you for letting them know I'm not human. Praise God. <laughs> you, know, let, let, you know, one of the things I, I always try to do as a pastor, just be honest. The same way I pray, I get tired. You know, after the morning prayers, sometimes I'm really exhausted. All right. John chapter 5 verse 2. So this is the last teaching in our series of teaching on dealing with delay and stagnation. Dealing with delay and stagnation. And one of the things we began to say is that when people feel stagnated, a lot of people are frustrated when they have that feeling. And I said to you, I said, every time you have a feeling, you know, most of the time we think it's bad. But most of the time, it's not really bad. It's only bad for two reasons. You don't understand what you're feeling and you don't know how to resolve what you're feeling. For example, if you feel hungry, what happens? You go and eat. It's only a bad feeling if you don't have food. If you feel lonely, you go and spend time with someone that would you know, just make you feel connected. It's only bad if you have nobody to connect to. So the same thing, once you feel stagnated, what's stagnation? 
Stagnation is what you call it, but the real feeling is this. You need to grow. That's what it is. So every time you feel as if I'm stagnated financially, the real conversation is that you need to grow. So you are being informed by your internal system that where you are, you have outgrown it, and there is a need to grow. But most people do not understand it, so they become frustrated with stagnation. Some people understand that I need to grow, but why do they become stagnated? They become stagnated because they don't know what to do, so they become frustrated. So why do people get, why do people get frustrated? This, so let me explain it. This is why people get frustrated when it comes to marriage. This is the same reason why people get frustrated when it comes to um, when it comes to finances, this is the same reason why people get frustrated when it comes to making progress in life. Hey, why are they frustrated? People are frustrated for one reason they do not know. Frustration means one thing. What you are doing is not working. Change it. So, why are people frustrated? You see a husband and wife. The husband is trying to make the marriage work and is going in a certain way. The wife is going in a certain way and it's not working. And instead of them to change the method, change the thinking, change the approach, what they do? They intensify effort. And they become frustrated. Frustration only means something. What you're doing is not working. Even if you apply more effort, it's still not working. If you're trying to get married and you increase the effort, you will still be frustrated because the simple thing frustration is saying that it's not working. Have you seen someone let me <laughs> on top of the bridge that the car stopped. What did they become? Frustrated. You know why? As soon as the car stopped, everybody opens the car. What did they check? The batteries. And when they check the battery, they hit it, hit it, hit it. Not as if we know what we're doing. But why is the person frustrated? The person, of course, he could be angry because he's behind time for something. He could be embarrassed because he's having to stop on the highway. But he really gets frustrated because the car is there and literally he's doing what he knows, which is to turn the key and hit the battery head. But it's not working and he's frustrated. Why is he frustrated? The real thing about frustration is this, that what you're doing is not working. That's what he's telling you. Why am I saying this here? Everybody write an area where you're frustrated and give yourself an assignment. I'm going to find out what else to do about this area to get ahead. Everybody, I want to write on an area. And don't just say my finances, something particular about your finances. So say, I've been trying to raise funds for two years now and I'm frustrated. So, and, and when you write that, then go back and ask yourself this and say, okay, how have I been trying to raise funds for two years? You have been trying to raise funds the same way for two years. And ask yourself, how am I going to change this? So frustration sets in because something is not working, an approach is not working, and we're trying to force it to work. We're hoping that if I put in more force, it will work. So, John chapter 5. So, we're talking about dealing with delay. So, today I just want to share four things with you because of the brevity of time. And I, I think all of you that are watching online can share with somebody else and this will really bless people today. So, the first thing is this, dealing with stagnation. Uh, you can go back to the YouTube series on YouTube, um, the videos on YouTube. And the first thing I want to say is this. Let's just read the Bible. John chapter 5 verse 2. The Bible says, Now there is a Jerusalem, but the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folks, or blind, hurt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Why were they waiting? Look at verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had. This is not the call of my message, but I want to point something very powerful and instructive to you. Everybody look up here. One of the things you must know in life and understand is this. If you're going to, let, let me rephrase it. If you are going to be very successful in life, and you are going to go at a faster pace. One of the key things you must understand, either when it comes to spiritual ministry, when it comes to family, when it comes to finance, is that everything has a pattern. 
question the bible says an angel will come and what and step the water and whosoever steps into it is healed where were they told that in the bible that was not in the bible how did they know they observed it it was a careful observation that ah when this happened there's always a miracle why am i saying so if you look at your life very well you will understand the pattern of grace in your life i'm telling if you look at your life that the first time i made one million it there was it looked mystical it looked coincidental but there was a pattern to it the first time i made 10 million there was a pattern to it the first time i made 50 million there was a pattern to it the first and what you now need to do is this once you understand the pattern what do you do you begin to align with the pattern because when the pattern begins to work you may not know what is working for example when you make terrible decisions there's a pattern me there are certain people in my life if the two of them agree about something even though i think it's not so i will not do it because i've observed by pattern not what the bible says i've observed by pattern that when those people talk and they agree they don't even know themselves when they agree if i do it it works against me i was there's a story that i heard about pastor the way that pastor the way anywhere he's going anytime he's going to do anything if he walks out of his house and if he uses his leg to hit a stone he's going to go back home and he says he's not meant to go there and they ask him why he said the bible he said this is my revelation and it's not for everybody he said the bible says that he shall give his angels charge over me lest i dash my foot against a stone he said for me to hit my foot angels are not there what am i going to where i don't have angelic protection see that thing is not for everybody but for him to say that there is a way he understands that thing so many of you single people if you understand there's a pattern in which you choose someone that breaks your heart when he comes he's always fast Brrr, always fast then it will sink there's a pattern you choose you know <laughs> i did some business recently and i struggled and i just went back he said what was the pattern the pattern was not well obeyed because all of a sudden when you want to lose money this is the pattern you will hear high figures in interest and you forget your brain is that not true you will just forget your brain hey high figures you forget and unfortunately you will do it this time you lose money you will not say okay i will use this one to recover that one and do you cannot see the pattern listen everybody did you notice that in the bible just patterns every time god had information to give people he always sent one angel whose name was gabriel yes or no so from patterns we seem to understand that gabriel was used to information dissemination it's not as if the bible says gabriel is for information but that's what we seem to know glory to god the question to you is this are you sensitive enough to know the pattern or you allow your emotions interfere with your mind so that you can't decide what you need to do so listen to me people that go very fast in life when other people are looking for a new way to do something all they're looking for is the pattern because once they see the pattern is faster there's no need to experiment again there's a consistent pattern for example do you know there are patterns of helpers do you know what i'm talking about i mean when i see people that are sent to help me i normally identify them there is a way they always come there is a way they always come like many of you you say i just come you don't you don't even know who your pastor is if you know who your pastor is <laughs> there's a pattern to your pastor there's a way the person will speak the word you understand that this is my pastor it's not as if you have not heard it before but there's a connection why my sheep hears my voice and they know it you know this is my church it's not about the father i was born here i'm married here i'm all like no, this is my church because when this person speaks to me there is a connection i don't know how he knows it's almost as if every sunday he knows what i'm going through and the reason why is that because God knows your spiritual family, He knows where to put your food. He knows where to put your food. So you are here going somewhere else, your food is somewhere else. So there's a, there's a pattern of grace that leads to success. There's a pattern that leads to failure. And the one that leads to failure is very simple. There's a way that cement right. So that means, he said, there's a way that cement right to a man, but the end thereof is the path of destruction. He says, initially it looks right. So, even destructive patterns always make sense until you get to the end 
So that was by the way. So that you can just take it fast. Chicken change. That's a side hustle. Praise God. That's side revelation. All right, let's keep going. It says, For an angel went down at certain seasons to the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first, you know, let me tell you, whosoever then first, me, because I want to put, it's not just troubling the water. There's an action you must take. Last year, things were very challenging in some areas. Of course, I know what to do. I took a seed, and you don't have to do this, but this is me. I took the first time in one single tranche, I'll give it 10 million. And I said, Lord, you are the only one. But the reason I've done that is because I've seen when we're about to buy our Bagada church, I went to see, you know, I went to see Pastor Chris. And it was a three day meeting that he was having, it was a training school. And I had this check in my Bible because it was outside the country. It was a lot of money, but it was not enough to 10 million, but it was in the millions. And every day, the Spirit of God had told me from Nigeria to give the money. And every day I would see him and I couldn't release it because it was a lot of money. It was a lot of, I just couldn't release it. The second day, I did. Then he came and prayed for me. Then all the other money we needed for, because that was the time we were trying to buy our, our property in Bagada. Then all the money we needed within one month. It was so supernatural that before we announced to the church, we had bought the land. Before we announced to the church, we had what? Bought the land. In terms of dollar sign, that land was bought about a million dollars then. Yeah. Because if you're looking at the ratio, maybe about three or four, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe that. What are the patterns? Have you, do you know the people that God put your word in their mouth? Do you know the people? Because, listen, life becomes easy when you understand patterns. Life becomes faster when you understand patterns. You will just know, I should not be in this relationship. I should not be in this place. I have a very a, a close friend. He had the Muslim boss. He said, every time God was to my level, he said, my Muslim boss will begin to abuse me. Will be, not abuse me, like literally abuse. He will begin to yap me about something. He will just say, hey, you, look at your car. Hey, hey. He will just start laughing at me. He said, within three to six months, there will be an opportunity to buy another car. He said, the guy just walked to my house. I was staying in, um, in Oniru in a service apartment, three-bedroom flat. I said, ha! Ah, my God, you're staying in a flat. For what? And the just had, you know, just yapped him and all of those things. He said, one year after, I was staying in my house. I had the hand of, um, a swimming pool in Lekki One. He said, the guy just came and said, after some time, he said, ah! So you're staying in the house with the swimming pool. You now have, it's in all this, all this, there are three in one. Why are you sharing compound? You should have your independent compound. He said, Pastor, that was the way that also happened. What am I saying to you? It takes you to understand. For example, as Nigeria is very tough, one thing I've noticed about tough time is this. That's when the richest, that's when the biggest, that's when the sudden breakthrough happens. So, for me, that's my thinking. Why? God told I. Because look at it, eh? God uses famine to elevate his people. Look through the Bible. It was during famine, Abraham became rich. It was during famine, Isaac became rich. It was during, it was during the terrible time in Egypt that what? Israel became rich. Those are even natural biblical patterns. And what I'm telling you is not just spiritual. Most of you are the financial analysts. How do you make decisions? Is it not true? Is it not true pattern? Data analysts. You make you make decisions through IT. They make decisions through data. They're looking for the pattern. Praise the Lord. Wow. Glory to God. So the Bible says this. 
and a certain man was there which was which had a sickness or infirmity 30 and 8 years let me put this in context this guy has been sick before just was born at this time just on a bit about 32 there about this guy was sick before just was born he says and when jesus saw him lie there and knew that he had been there for a long time in that case he said to him will thou be made whole he says do you want to be well look at what the man said the important man said unto him he says i have no man jesus said do you want to be made whole what is the answer to that question it's either a yes or what a no but because he was stuck listen to me he thought he was stuck because of the river he didn't understand he was stuck in his mind because he was stuck a stagnation had now become a mindset oh my god the problem with problem is this when problem is done with you you will not just be having a problem you will think you are the problem because it becomes a mindset so because you are not married right now you will think there's something wrong with you you now begin to say even my job even when there's nothing you will take that problem as a mindset and begin to interpret in another area and because that's what you think as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so you had a terrible breakup you take that breakup and begin to say oh that breakup it moves into your business that man the issue was the fact that he couldn't get into the water jesus came to him with an opportunity and says hey do you want to be well because of his current state of mind he could not see what Jesus was saying he saw what he was where he was oh my god because of his state of mind he could not see what jesus was saying he was saying where he was jesus said do you want to be well he said i have no man did you see that he was so problem focused he could not see the opportunity he could see where it was life you don't see life the way it is you see life the way you are that's why some people your wife that you think is a demon to so some people is an angel Sometimes you think that there's no opportunity somewhere. Some people think it's the best opportunity. Because you don't see life the way it is. You see life the way you are. So let's read this. So the Bible says this. <laughs> and Jesus said, do you want to make hold? He says, sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the, into the pool, and while I'm coming, another step down before me. Let me just say the first thing. Just four things you have to do to break stagnation and delay. The first thing is this. You need to identify and change the narrative. What is the narrative? There is a story everybody has that keeps them stagnated and delayed. For this man, the story was simple. Sir, I have no man. Have you identified your own story that keeps you stagnated? Some people's story is this. Very simple. Some people's story is very simple. It's a simple story. It's that I know nobody. That's the story. I don't have capital. That's a story. I'm a woman. That's a story. I'm in Nigeria. I'm not saying that your story is not true. I'm only saying that the nature of the story is that it keeps you in bondage. So, let me give you an example. Because, <laughs> look at the story of David and Goliath. Why couldn't everyone fight Goliath? They said, look at his size. That was his story. The story was that Goliath is so big that if you attempt to fight him, it will crush you. There is a story. So, you know what the story does? The story makes you feel comfortable. That it's not my fault. So, when the brothers of David spoke to David, they were like, look at him. He's so big. Meaning that if he was our size, we would have taken him on. But because he's not our size, what can we do? There's a story. The question is, what is the story? He said, if not that this guy that wasted my time, I'll be married by now. There is a story that makes you feel that way. Let me give another story. Look at the story. Look at Jeremiah. God called Jeremiah to be a, um, a prophet. Jeremiah said that, sir, he said, God, I'm a stammerer. There's a story that says, hey, the reason why I can't do this, there's a story. Have you been able to identify the story that keeps you that way? Three things about the story you must know. The first thing is this. The story helps you justify your state. It helps you. And say, hey, it's not really your fault. It helps you justify your state. So it will help you say things like, you know, uh, you know, don't feel too bad. I mean, you're here. What, what, what do you expect? You're Nigeria. What, what do you expect? You're, 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 you're an immigrant. What do you expect? You're here in Africa. What do you expect? You're this. The story helps you justify. So the story says to you, say, ah, so why you, can I marry myself? I can't marry myself. You know, there's something. See, and most of the time, the story is not wrong. Only that is partially, only that is empowering you negatively. So 
So when you say that um, they don't support entrepreneurs in Nigeria, is it a lie? No, the story is true. But the effect it has on you is damaging because the story helps you feel comfortable. And the reason why you have that story is, I'll tell you the reason why I have the story. So that you don't run mad. Your mind must give you a reason why you're doing what you're doing and can make you feel comfortable. Because if you don't have that reason, you'll be running. So your mind comes up with a reason and says, you know, the problem with the fact that oil prices are down. So that's why. The problem is COVID. COVID has reduced sales. It will give you a story. But even when there was no COVID, your sales was down. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah? But what your mind does that? Because if your mind doesn't tell you that story, you'll be, you'll be worrying every day. So your mind, in order to protect you from running mad and overdrive, it gives a story. It says, look at it. The reason why you are not married is simple. Because you are not very beautiful. If you were yellow-skinned, and this and this and this, by now you'll have been married. Why don't you have a job? It's very simple. Your parents don't know anybody. You don't come from a popular family. So how can you have a job? Why can't you scale your businesses? Because I don't have the funds. And I've done everything possible to get funds. But nobody's willing to invest in what? In people that are entrepreneurs to help them scale. Your story is not a lie, but your story will hold you in bondage. When the man says, sir, I have no man, was he lying? He wasn't lying. He was telling the truth. Some of you are here. Why are you stuck? Oh, I'm stuck because three years ago, I did an investment. I lost 20 million. I understand what you said. So, your story holds you that way. Glory to God. So, the first thing your story does is to justify your state. Then the second thing, your story helps you avoid personal responsibility. It helps you with the fact that, so that it doesn't make, so that, let me say this away. Your story helps you avoid personal responsibility. Your story helps you to think you have done everything you can. And right now, there's nothing you can do again. So, your story helps you to think, I'm not the one that is lazy. It's not my fault. It's something outside my control. And people that delayed and stagnated, whatever area that delayed and stagnated, this is exactly the way they think. It's not something I can do anything about. I've done everything. It's not working. And that's it. And the third thing is this. Your story keeps you stable. So, the reason why you get stable and comfortable is that your story is very comforting to you. So, you don't go to a mad place because it's very comforting to you. So, this man told Jesus Christ, he said, see what he says. He says, I have no man. It's not as if I don't want to be healed. It's not as if I don't want to get there. But I have no man. The question is this. What story are you telling yourself that's keeping you captive? I'm too young. You know, if I was not too young. Have you told yourself that kind of story before? I'm too old. Have you noticed that kind of story? Some people are saying they are too young. Some people are saying they are too old. Some people, what story are you telling yourself? Something because I was fired. Some people, their firing was related to their promotion. So the question is, what story? You ask the pastor, why are you doing this? And you, know, you know that I'm a part-time pastor. Was Paul not a part-time pastor? Who was more effective than Paul? What story are you telling yourself? Uh, you, 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 know, you, know, you, know, you know I'm not good in speaking. That's the story. Because it, it's not my fault. It's the story you taught yourself to explain why you're not getting the results you're, not, you're getting. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, what was, story, what was Saul's story? When Saul saw, when Saul saw David, Saul told David his story. He said, David, this man has been a warrior from his youth. Saying that the amount of years, he says, David, you are a youth. This man has been a warrior from his youth. Meaning that when it comes to experience, you have no match for him. Saul looked at him and said, he's so big, we can't get him. David looked at him and said, he's so big, I can't miss him. Because your story is either empowering you or what? Limiting you. Glory to God. Or if not that I missed that contract, if not that my uncle did not help me, if not that, if not that God did not answer my prayer, if not that this is not, there's always something. The second thing, so, so let me just help you with this. And maybe this is where I will stop. Pay attention to what you are thinking. Pay attention to how you are thinking. And pay attention to what you are saying. Did you hear that? How do you change your story? You will not even notice except you start paying attention. Pay attention to 
what you are thinking. What you're thinking means what you focus on. Do I focus on problems or I focus on solutions? Then pay attention to how you're thinking. Is my thinking negative or positive? Then pay attention to what you are saying. I want to show you something quickly. Daniel chapter 10. Verse 11. Daniel had prayed and for 21 days there was stagnation. Prayer was not answered. Something was delayed. See what, what the angel said. Verse 20, Daniel chapter 10 verse 11. And he, the angel said unto Daniel, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words I speak unto thee. Stand upright for unto thee now I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel. See what it says. For from the first day, you did set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before the Lord. Your words were heard. This was after 21 days. The angel said from the first day, you were heard. How come I was heard the first day and it took 21 days for it to happen? How come my prayer was heard during NLP and it still takes six months for it to happen? How come this was held then and it takes three months to happen? And the angel began to talk about the fact that there was a demonic interruption. That's not our focus today. And what our focus is is this. When there was a delay, how come Daniel did not lose the miracle? This is how it he didn't lose the miracle. This is the question. When there is a delay and stagnation, why is it that some people never eventually have the miracle? Some people never come out of it. This is the answer. So if you are here and you're wondering, I've not been able to come out of this. I've not been able to come out of the stagnation of the day. What is the answer? This is the answer. See what the Bible says. The angel said to him, it says, to chasten, and verse 12, to chasten yourself before the Lord. It says, thy words were heard. And next line. Let's read together. I want to go. And I am what? I am come for what? What was he saying? He said, in between the time you prayed and the time I came, because you maintained your confession, you were able to empower my angelic activity so that I could destroy all the barriers and come through. What happens to people is that when there is a delay, they begin to say things that begins to paralyze their angel. Because sometimes in between when you are praying and when it happens, there is a warfare. And it's a warfare of words. What you don't understand is that when you are talking nonsense, your angel becomes paralyzed. Because angels are empowered by our words and they are disempowered by our words. So in between the period what that Daniel was praying and the manifestation came. Daniel kept saying the right thing. I know that the job will come through. I know the visa will come through. I know the marriage will come through. I know this will come through. Father, I thank you it's done. Father, I thank you it's done. This project will be well. I don't understand. The more he said so, the angel was asking stronger in battle. 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 He said, Daniel, the reason why I eventually came this the delay was that you were saying the right thing. Can you see the problem right now? You think God failed. What were you saying? As soon as it happened in one month, I don't know what's going on. The angel become paralyzed. I'm tired of life. Angel become paralyzed. Everything is over. Angel become paralyzed. Things are so hard. Everything is over. You, you just paralyze the angel. The angel is saying, bro, stop where? When there's a delay, maintain your words. Praise God. Praise God. Maintain your words and keep taking positive steps towards your goal. Don't become passive. Keep taking positive steps towards your goal. Let's pray. That's just one out of four, but we'll spend all the time to pray. Let's pray.